Hello, good morning everyone and welcome to this webcast about Nixu uh, H1 financial results call and uh, you are now joining this webcast from, from Nixu office where we are still, still quite uh, alone as, as we are still following the remote working conditions uh, following the COVID pandemic. Hopefully the situation will improve soon but, but right now of course it, it's still essential to take care of your employee health and uh, business continuity overall. Uh, I'm happy, happy to go, go through the results right now with you and um, there is a Q&A functionality within the webcast tool. So I would be happy if you could uh, type down your questions into the tool and towards the end of the presentation I will address those, those questions with answers as the best, best we can. Don't hesitate to take them out. I'm, I'm, this brings much more interaction into this session, I'm sure about that. Uh, even though this, this spring definitely was one of those, those years that will, will stay in the memory for a long time uh, and there is lockdowns and, and uh, people working from homes and, and you know, businesses getting a little bit silent unfortunately in many areas. One of the areas that didn't go silent was the cybercrime uh, industry and as we all know it is an industry nowadays and, and the cybercrime and the hackers are active all over the world. And maybe one of the most notable uh, attacks during the spring was the t Twitter breach, uh, which happened, happened so that, that uh, people started noting that uh, very prominent people on Twitter were sending, sending very odd tweets about bitcoins and, and even in messages that were associated with the COVID-19. For example, the Kanye West tweet there on the right in the, in the screen. And, uh, and of course this kind of raised curiosity and, and questions that okay what is this about and, and what is happening and what it finally turned out was that this was a scam attempt. Uh, people were trying to scam bitcoins from people so if you clicked on the links that, that were uh, on these tweets you were, you were going to lose your, lose your bitcoins and, and there were thousands of, of uh, these tweets coming from very, very prominent and trustworthy persons on, on Twitter. Uh, and what it turned out was that this was actually a, a hack attempt by, by script kiddies, as you could tell them. So, so not very organized, organized crime, but, but more like um, you know, young hackers who were practicing their skills and, and doing this sort of a very concerted attack. And uh, one could say that this maybe was a, a, a good thing that it was this sort of an attack, because Twitter is such a prominent messaging tool nowadays that you could think that if you use this tool to really make make uh, you know, threats or, or something like that by nation state uh, leaders, you could actually lead into a much, much bigger, bigger things. My, my first impression personally was that this is a, a hack by a nation, nation actor or so, so but, but turns out that that wasn't the case. Uh, it's also an interesting hack in the sense that, that Twitter was, was hacked by, uh, by accessing their internal tools, so Twitter employees internal tools and the access was gained by, by breaching the trust or, or let's say doing a phishing attack on some of these Twitter uh, employees and, uh, and then accessing their internal tools and then through that gaining access to these prominent accounts and, and using them to, to, uh, to make the tweets out. And, and this is a good example of a very sophisticated attack uh, or let's say not very sophisticated attack but an attack that gains you a lot of ground by using, using different methodologies and, and for which Twitter was not, not you know, well prepared enough even though I believe that Twitter as a company is probably taking quite good care of their cybersecurity. Nixu was not involved in this, this case anyhow uh, and that has, allows us of course to analyze it. And in, in this case for example uh, the employee awareness, that how, how the employees treat attacks on them, uh, what rights do the employees have to their internal systems and, and of course, what is the capability of Twitter to know this, this sort of a, a, a uh, threat actors accessing their internal tools was the question. And, and all of those are areas where actually Nixu is helping our clients to improve their cybersecurity posture. And, and they are all, let's say, separate areas of cybersecurity expertise. And, and again, in order to protect from this sort of a, a uh, complicated attack, you need to address several areas of your, 
of your security posture. It's not enough to just you know, protect a Twitter application, for example, by, by some attacker. You need to do much more and much more many layers. And this is a challenge that we have uh, with our clients that we need to explain to them that, hey, there are several layers of security that you need to take care of. And there is no one expert that can help you you know, come, come uh, resilient to the hackers. You need to do the whole process and the whole governance model and everything needs to be done right. And, and still something could happen and then you need to be able to detect what is happening and how to, how to take care of the situation. So uh, dangers are still out there and, and definitely the cybercrime industry is, is continuing on their, their uh, motion. And obviously uh, during this period when everyone turned into remote working mode, and in, in some, some stores, the digital channel was the only way to access any of the goods of the stores or the sales of the stores only came from digital channels. Then the, the question of cyber security becomes even, even more, more crucial. And then I'm, you know, from Nixus perspective, of course, it was wonderful in a way to see that, that our mission statement, keeping the digital society running, was to, uh, really, really on its use. We were helping our clients to stay afloat in this situation, to be able to continue in the digital world when the physical world was very much shut down. And of course, the same applied to Nixo as well. How do we turn our operations into a digital mode? How we operate in the digital world and, uh, and stay safe and healthy at the same time? Um, from Nixo's perspective, the key one uh, was, of course, January and February were still mostly, mostly business as usual before the COVID pandemic. And there we continued on the track of improving the Nixo platform, meaning our operational efficiency, our systems, our forecasting capability, uh, our, our visibility into our order intake and, and being with the clients, uh, being more active in the sales work. And this is the work that continued from the second half of 2019. And, and towards March, we were actually reaching quite good results in this work. We were definitely improving and, and doing the right things. Then, of course, in the middle of the March, uh, things started hitting at the Nixu, Nixu market areas um, and, and we really need to turn, turn into a, a crisis mode uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we pretty quickly uh, turned Nixu into remote working uh, mode in all of our operations countries in order to protect the, the health of employees and the business continuity. And then of course came the question that, okay, how are our clients going to react and, and how are they reacting? And then business-wise, uh, the Q2 transformed into a battle against uncertainty uh, because we, we had to you know, fight, <laughs> fight for our, our right to work at the clients and, and really tr try to sell more and, and protect wh what we were doing. And, and finally, I think we, we, we ended, ended quite well. Uh, we improved our EBITDA uh, from, from Q1 and, uh, and, and turned, turned a, a decent, decent growth. And how, how this all looks in numbers, um, so, so improving our operational efficiency and having a clear focus on client work were the key, uh, key goals during the, during the Q2. Uh, our revenue uh, grew by 14%, where of course there was still the effect from, from SNT acquisition from 2019 uh, affecting the Q1, so the pro forma Q1 was, uh, was uh, coming, coming from SNT. Uh, organic growth, we managed to grow 5%, which during these times, uh, and, and in comparison to the very successful H1 2019, was a kind of decent, decent uh, result. Uh, the managed continuous services uh, grew 37% and represented 18% of the revenue totally. And in EBITDA, uh, we ended up 147 thousand euros uh, in the positive being one one percent of the revenue uh, adjusted adjusted EBIT that was about one million euro positive uh, and, and the adjustment was done for the reorganization and cost savings program costs uh, and especially good thing in adjusted EBITDA improvement was the trend from Q1 to Q2 where we where we improved in EBITDA, EBITDA quite well obviously we were we were uh, cutting costs among uh, the pandemic times, uh, but at the same time, we were trying to improve the efficiency uh, with focused client work and, and, and so on. When the pandemic began in, in March, of course, Nixu was acting in a, in a really uh, deep fog, as, as everyone 
uh, in, in, in business at that time. And, and of course, we didn't know what will happen and, and how, how deep will, will this uh, crisis be. So after, after some careful consideration, we decided that we'll, we'll be uh, risk averse in this situation and, and we, are, we are taking the situation as, as serious as we can. And, and we, we laid down three, three goals uh, to protect the business continuity of Nixu. And, and first one was to protect and raise cash reserves. So in order that if our business would, would collapse, if the clients would really cancel, cancel everything through the pandemic, we would have enough cash reserves to maintain uh, the, the ongoing operations at Nixu. Uh, then the second goal, of course, was that we, we maintain uh, what we have, we maintain the, the, the basis that we have and, and, and uh, of course, the people of Nixu in order that we can continue towards the growth ambition once the situation becomes more normal, normal again. And then the third goal, of course, after this sort of crisis, there will be a, a turn towards better and, and the demand for cybersecurity, I'm sure, will be much higher at that stage. So we want to come out of the crisis stronger with much better operational efficiency. Of course, we were not, not in the best possible shape in our operational efficiency following the H2 2019. So, so we definitely needed to continue on the actions, but, but we, we decided that we want to also, also make sure that we are really um, uh, fit for, for, for growth again once, once the crisis dissolves. So th these were the three, three main goals. And uh, I would say that we were, we were able to, to succeed, succeed in those goals. Um, the organic growth during the period, of course, was, was quite moderate. Uh, but at the same time, the comparison period is the H1 2019, which was a uh, very, very successful period. And uh, if you remember back from history, we had the, um, the large, large client, security partnership client, in the first half of 2019, uh, which, which provided a, a very, very big increase in our revenue during that time. We were not able to come back to those levels. We were missing about 1 million euro revenue from that one, one account still in this H1 2020 when compared to H1 2019. But we were able to make that up in other, other businesses. So, so that's, that's something that I'm, I'm happy about. Then, of course, protecting our employees, protecting uh, Nixon's health and safety was important. And, and there we, we managed quite well. Uh, we didn't didn't really have have too many uh, too many uh, cases of of people getting sick sick of corona or or, uh, or so on. Um, then we also of course understood that the COVID is affecting our clients in a way that they will face new threats, and at the same time they are also pushing their employees to remote working. They are utilizing their digital channels to to uh, address their clients and, and sell their sell their. Uh, uh, products. So, so what we did, we implemented a marketing campaign specifically addressing these issues in the COVID situation. Because of course, in this sort of a situation, when everything is remote, the sales, sales becomes harder and the sales team must work extra efforts in, in order to create, create new sales. And we actually were quite satis uh, satisfied with the order intake in a very difficult sales situation. Uh, of course, it was not optimal order intake towards the summer, but, but it was satisfactory. So we were able to, able to close new deals, new deals uh, quite, quite well. Um, as did, we, we wanted to protect our cash reserves. And in that, that sense, we also negotiated a new uh, credit facility, a reserve credit facility of 4 million euros in, in order to be protected and to be taken into use if the situation gets worse. We, we didn't have to take that, that into use, but, but we have now that that's signed and ready should, should there, there come need, need for additional facilities. And this chart shows the, the development in our cash position, the net debt development, which developed quite favorably uh, during the year. So, so you can see that from 13 June 2019, our net debt was about 8 million euros. As of 13th of June 2020, uh, it was 2.5 5 million euros. And, and that comes from the, the uh, to reduce or decrease in total loans and then at the same time increase in cash. Of course, the situation is not completely that good because we were able to defer payments of about 3.3 million to the second half from the first half. So, so we, we made, made uh, actions in order to defer payments and save, save our cash positions. So, so those, those will reduce our cash position during this, this second half. But then again, we expect the business to, to pick up speed during second half. Uh, already, so so more more return towards normal. 
So I would say that, that from business, uh, ongoing business perspective, we are going concern principle, we are, we are in a quite, quite good position and happy about that. Uh, one of the hardest things that we had to, had to do uh, was to, to implement a, a reorganization and cost savings program in order to, to improve the operational efficiency and, and profitability of the, of the company. And the main reason for that was the, the uncertain second half, because we don't know still what are the full effects of the pandemia uh, going to be, meaning that how will the ef economic effects play out, how will our clients, uh, what sort of a budgets will our clients have for the second half. We wanted to make sure that we are, we are as a company, we are in a sta stable ground and, and we have a, a the capacity that is, is on the right level uh, to, towards the demand. And, uh, and unfortunately, of course, we had to, uh, we had to touch the employments of, of uh, some of the Nixons during this, this process. We, we laid down a, a target of a permanent cost reduction of about 200,000 euros uh, on a monthly level, starting from 1st of July and then having an annual uh, one-time cost savings about 1 million euro before the restructuring costs uh, for, for this full, full year. And we were uh, about on the ballpark in, this, in these savings. And, and w what was the effect, uh, unfortunately, was that, that of course we reduced a, a those, those uh, out of the pocket one-time costs that we could, but then we also had to, had to uh, implement uh, permanent and temporary layoffs across Nixon market areas which of course I'm, I'm sorry for those Nixon employees who were affected, affected by that. And, and the associated restructuring costs were about 850,000 euros uh, uh, towards this, this program. The, the, uh, as, as kind of uh, hard as this, this program was, uh, it was very necessary. And now we are, we are better prepared for uncertain H2. And then from our perspective, we expect the Q3 to be the hardest from project work perspective because there is, uh, of course, still uncertainty and then the order intake uh, towards the summer and, and so on. That where, where are the projects going to begin and, and which, how are the clients reacting? Uh, are the clients back to work full mode or are they still in remote working and, and are they able to, able to start the projects as planned? That there's still a lot of uncertainty about that at this, this point. We haven't changed our vision though. Uh, we still believe quite strongly that cybersecurity in a digital world will be a necessity and, and Nixu is quite well positioned in this competition still. We want to be the trusted good partner for cybersecurity services, for digitalization in the Northern Europe, and we want to be the best place to work for cybersecurity professionals. That, that vision remains unchanged. Uh, in in uh, fall 2019, uh, we released our growth ambition targets, stating quite, quite high yearly growth targets and, uh, and, uh, and other targets. And for those, uh, we decided that, that during the COVID situation, we will put those on hold. So we are not, not right now pushing towards maximum growth, so to say, or these, these 25, 35% yearly growth levels. Uh, because that would be a little bit of the risking of the company. We, we want to make sure that we have uh, the grounds for profitability. We are able to continue the business as normal. And then once the COVID situation dissolves, we will come back to, to fulfilling that, that growth ambition. So, so that's our situation right now. And, and of course, during this fall, we will monitor how, how the situation looks like. We will improve our operational efficiency to be ready, ready as the market is emerging. Uh, Related to that, uh, we, we draw our financial guidance in the, in the spring and uh, we are still fit, withholding the financial guidance for 2020 uh, back. We are, we are now looking closely, closely at our forecast and our client understanding and hopefully we are able to, to come back with the financial guidance quite soon. But, but right now we are still, still withholding that guidance. The market, of course, uh, as said, COVID forced everyone to digitalize and the market outlook uh, on the long term has not, not gone anywhere. Uh, so so the, the, the research company Gartner uh, expects the global cybersecurity market to grow about 4% this year, down from 9% uh, pre-COVID estimates. So, so there is a drop, 
drop in demand in, in the global market. And the growth rates actually differ quite strongly between different sectors, between different technologies and, and uh, technology areas. Uh, the consultancy, uh, security consultancy services in Gartner terms being on this average, average level, so the growth being there about 4, four to 5 five percent globally, uh, the Europe not being the highest, highest growing area. Uh, but even though af, as is, if 2020 is, is still a little bit um, downward in the, in the growth cycles, even Gartner is estimating in 2021 the growth to return to a normal levels. And as you can see from the graph, to continue with, with quite fast, fast growth uh, for, the, for the coming years. And this is of course quite, quite natural and normal. Many organizations have at this stage realized that their, their business is increasingly dependent on the digital channels, both for their own employees, but also for their clients. And, and of course, when everything is digital, you need to keep that digital channel secure and, and safe. So, so uh, cybersecurity is, is again more and more necessity and, and that investment has to be taken. And uh, I believe that also those clients that have been a little bit luckwards in, in uh, in the digitalization attempts will now, now continue and push their digitalization projects. And I think this is also a thing that we have seen that the clients are, are not pushing back in their digitalization attempts. They might be saving elsewhere, but the digitalization programs are ongoing. So, so that, that promise is good for, for cybersecurity investments in the future as well. The world will become digital and when the world is digital, there will be always need for cybersecurity. And that's of course is right where Nixu is positioned. We are 100% cybersecurity company. We have the mission of keeping the digital society running and nothing has changed there. We are, we are well positioned in our market areas in the Northern Europe uh, and, and we are right now the, the dedicated cybersecurity specialist company number one in, in, the, in this area. Um, we have the, the background, the Nordic heritage, the trust from there and we have impressive track record and with good, good uh, client satisfaction scores. And, and with numerous clients and numerous engagements. That gives us a good position to continue uh, with, with our, our uh, service portfolio and, and being the holistic cybersecurity partner for our clients. And, and that, that work is, is continuing every day right now. That concludes uh, our, our presentation right now. And um, I'm happy to take, take questions from the audience from the webcast. We have a screen here and hopefully I'm able to see, see if there are, are questions there. There is at least two questions. Uh, first one is that what is your opinion how soon Nixu will be able to carry on according to its growth ambition? Uh, that is a good question. I'm now kind of biting my tongue a bit because I'm, I'm uncertain whether I'm able to answer, answer that question because we haven't, haven't given any, any official, official answer on it. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe right now the best I can state is that, that the growth ambition is there. We have not changed any of the fundamentals and, and what is the right moment to continue on the, on the growth ambition. I think that is defined quite much by the market and, and by the global pandemic situation. So, so we will judge that within the Nixu management leadership and, and the board of Nixu. Uh, on case by case basis and, and of course during this fall we will be evaluating the situation closely and, and then deciding that what is the right, right moment to, to strike. Definitely we are not, not withholding back for, for you know, many years. It's more I think it's a question of that okay uh, which month and, and, and which, which year this year or next year. I guess that's, that's the more of the question. Uh, and were, were there any, any other, did I miss one question? Can we scroll? Scroll upwards. Uh, yes. Can you show in order order the questions? Okay. That, yeah, that was the first question. So so yeah. So uh, cybersecurity is trust business. How willing are the customers to to operate remotely with the cybersecurity partner? That is a really good question, and thank you thank you for asking this out because. Um, it is a trust business and that is actually one of the reasons why we are focusing on this northern European market area. We want to be close to our clients, we want to have the client intimacy, that we have consultants who speak the same language, who are nearby 
nearby the clients. And I think that trust needs to be there. But then at the same time, now that everyone is working remotely any, anyway, I think it will become easier to, to use people from different locations uh, joining into the client projects. So I think we will always need those consultants who are, who are you know, speaking the same language and who are trusted by the client already, but now it becomes easier to, uh, to cross exchange people from different locations and, and of course utilize the, the power base that we have here in Finland, also in the other, other international markets. Uh, I think the trust needs to be gained somewhere else. You probably can't gain the trust with new clients only remotely. But then again, we have a, a quite good client base already. Uh, okay, uh, and then if we take the next question, what was the EBIT contribution from technology sales? Um, yes, so we, are, we have shared the, the revenue, revenue uh, parts uh, between the different, different uh, business models that we have, but we are not sharing, sharing the profitability figures for these different different sales. Uh, what I can say is that, that in technology sales, we had a, a one, one exceptionally large, large technology resale deal with very, very low margins. So, so below 10% margin, which is below that we typically, typically aim for. So, so I would say that the, the EBIT contribution was there, but it wasn't, wasn't very, very large in, in that, that area. Are you seeing clients neglecting investments in cybersecurity in short term because of the pandemic? Um, yes, very, very good question. And yes, we, we saw very varied uh, reactions from our client base. So some of the clients uh, implemented full company-wide savings programs where you know, all the consultants were thrown out of the, of the client and, and they didn't look at whether it was cybersecurity or someone else. They just you know, cut off everything immediately. And, and there were these, these actions, so we were hurt in, in some clients and, and even in continuous services, the clients decided to, to hold that service for a moment and, and, and we of course, in these cases, we want to serve the client, so we agreed to hold, hold the service for a moment. Uh, then at the same time, we saw some clients that were actually increasing their, their investments to cybersecurity because of this incident. Of course, if you ask me, if you, can, <laughs> you can ask that, which I feel is the wiser in the longer term, but. Uh, but the clients make their own, own decisions, so, so uh, there were uh, these short-term short -term savings, which I think that need to, will need to be paid back at some point. Um, and then there's the question of uh, what was the amount of corona-specific cost savings, for example, reduced travel, meeting, and, and marketing expenses. Uh, good question. We, of course, made, made uh, savings if we compare to the, to the last year, 2019. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just comparing the cost, cost basis that we had. We didn't calculate exactly that what were you know the corona specific savings, but but several hundred thousand uh, I think would would be uh, would be the the right amount somewhere between half half a million and and, and a full full million in, in savings. But of course, they were all. All sort of cost savings, not only saved travel and, and coffee at the office and, and so on. So different savings uh, that we that we did. Mm, any changes to Nixus International presence? Are all the current market areas still in the long-term plans? Uh, uh, good question. And, and yes, they are. We, we intend to be the number one cybersecurity provider in the Northern Europe. And in that regard, we of course need to maintain the basis that we have. And even though we had to, uh, we had to, to lay down some, some people and, uh, and kind of uh, stabilize operations, we are not, not closing any, any locations. Right now, of course, in the short term, we are not looking into, into opening new markets, but more, more uh, stabilizing and building the critical mass in those, those markets where we are. But all of those markets are, are in our future plans as well. Um, and then there's the question of, can you discuss the performance in different countries in, in H1? Yes, um, again, uh, figures that we are not, not fully sharing. Uh, what I could state is that, that uh, I think all of, the, all of the market areas were, were suffering in, in their own rights during the H1. In the Netherlands, we were in an unfortunate situation where we were, we were pushing for investments actually. We were trying to scale up the operations and, and we were making, making uh, let's say, our second investment round in the Netherlands to, to reach, reach that, uh, that critical mass and scale and, and that, that caused increased investments there. 
which we had to had to be told and, and stop uh, with the with the COVID COVID situation. Unfortunately, in in Finland and Sweden, it was much more let's say uh, stable. Uh, more stable challenges compared to the situation normal in Denmark we were actually able to able to improve from from last year so so in Denmark I think we were best off in the in the situation uh, and then there's a question uh, that how many employees were temporarily laid off in Q2 uh, for the temporary laid offs we we mainly used the the uh, method of, of transforming the uh, Finnish summer holiday bonuses into, into additional vacations. And, and so actually the amount of employees that were temporarily laid off uh, is, is not that huge, but there were, let's say, extra holidays gained, gained through this, this manner. And of course, from the company perspective, the monetary, monetary amount is, is the same. I don't have any exact figures for the employees. It was a, a very, very large number. Most, most of the Finnish employees were, were as part of that, that uh, that structure. Then there's a question about acquisitions and are acquisitions on hold for now. Uh, we haven't made any, any statements about the acquisitions and, uh, and we, are, we are estimating the situation currently uh, for, for day to day and, and, and of course uh, if we have the means and if there is a good target we are of course always, always interested and then, then it's a case by case, case decisions. Um, then there's a question that what kind of roles were laid off during the spring, consultants or from the sub support functions. Um, the the uh, unfortunate layoffs were, were uh, targeted across the organization to, of course, based on the specific needs for different market areas and different teams. And there were both, both uh, support staff as, as well as, as consultants uh, affected by these, these changes. Um, and then uh, this was about the refund question, but new, yes. Uh, so how well Nixu has been able to adapt to offering, uh, to offering more services remotely? Any lessons learned for, for future? Uh, good question, uh, which I think that we still need to, to do our lessons learned and, and really, really look into, into what, uh, what were taking place di between different business units in, in the, in the springtime. Um, I think we've been able to, to adapt to the situation. And of course, Nixon has always been remote work uh, friendly organization. So we have been using and working, working remotely. Uh, there are some work that needs to be done in the client facilities, in the, in the server infrastructure or so on. And then there are some clients that always, always request that we need to be, be on site. For the other clients, I think the, the work transformed quite easily into remote working mode. And of course, that was easy when the clients were remote as well. So, so I think there is a lot, lot to be learned from there. Of course, we working remotely all the time, you know, let's say this forced remote working that has its toll on the employees as well. And, and I think this, if the situation continues during the fall, this is a thing that we need to look seriously at. How do we keep up the team spirit? How do we socialize between, between next ones and how we support working, working from home even, even better than we did uh, during the spring. But I think also this situation gives us opportunities from international working, working perspective. Uh, then there's a question that uh, can you elaborate how much your result was improved due to temporary support mechanism from governments in your operating countries, such as now in the Netherlands, you mentioned in the report. Uh, yes, uh, Netherlands was, was pretty much the only market where we were able to get direct direct cash uh, benefits. So, so in, in, in other areas, it was mostly pushing back some payments. So, and they were part of the net debt calculations or the deferred payments there, uh, for example, uh, that payments in, in Finland and, and, and such, such payments. So, so there were no, no big government funding. We were still, you know, uh, mainly, mainly profitable and, and growing companies. So of course, we were not as hardly affect, hard affected as restaurants or hotels, for example. Uh, next question, uh, regarding Denmark, excluding the large technology sales deal, how did the consulting business succeed? Is the acquisition meeting expectations? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I think the consulting business is also, also doing, doing quite well. And, and of course, the technology 
part is part of their business, so it's not, not something that's totally you know, out of the scope or something like that. I consider that as part of normal part of our business there. So, so I think that, of course, we had the challenges with Ascenta during, during the second half of 2019, uh, but I think now we are on a good track, we are improving, and, and the integration with Nixu is, is going nicely. So, so I, I would say that we are meeting the expectations there and uh, building the Nixu brand in, in, in Denmark. And also having a, a joint projects and, and, and projects uh, that are coming, or the clients that are coming due to the Nixu size uh, that Esenta didn't have previously. Good. I think now we we reached the end of the end of the questions so far. Thank you very much for for really good, active questions. I'm I'm happy happy uh, for having having so many. Even though we are not having people people physically present here here in this meeting room. Mm, if there is anything more, I'm waiting waiting for. Do we have a delay in the getting the questions onto the screen if someone is typing it, or is it instant? It's okay. So it seems like that we have reached the end of end of the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in for this results call and uh, hoping that we are able to return to normal uh, normal quite soon and, and then holding holding normal uh, investor events as well and uh, addressing you all on, on Nixus Nixus growth and our growth ambition. As said, the society will become digital and the cybersecurity is needed there and Nixus position has not changed in a way that we, we have a good position to to continue on the growth path that we have and confident about that. Thank you very much. Take care and enjoy the day. <laughs>